We're officially entering summer blockbuster territory as the hype for superheroes is rising just like the fuel prices. Luckily, while we're all waiting to make the MCU another few billion dollars, the TVCU has you covered with all its awesome YouTube videos. So while we all wait for the return of a Chris Hemsworth who ain't flat, I've noticed you seem to have a thing for superhero power demonstrations. So here I am with Volume 3. <laughs> Ezra Miller might have found himself on the wrong side of the law, but Barry Allen ain't about that life. We see that in full flow when he's trying to interview for a job at a pet store filled with lots of good boys. He eyes the girl named Iris who gets into an accident thanks to a lousy boomer driver. Seriously dude, was that sandwich worth your freaking truck? Anyway, Barry senses the danger and switches over to flash mode as he rescues his somewhat likely love interest in a graceful sequence that almost feels like a ballet performance. Barry totally shows off here and even manages to sneak in a little sausage burglary in the process. And that's fine because he zips right back to the pet store and treats the cute doggos with his stolen goods. Honestly speaking, he should have been feeding a wiener dog if you ask me. That would have been so appropriate. Were you here? Now my foolish boy. We all know how powerful Wanda Maximoff is, but she didn't really flex as much in Age of Ultron. However, there's one scene that stands out, and yes, it's the same one where Captain America tries to choke a robot. Yeah, I think Steve Rogers has got himself a little fetish, but we're not here to shame him. Well, not at least in this video anyway. Ultron kicks the shit out of America's kinkiest soldier and makes his escape, leaving the train to crash. That's when the Scarlet Witch decides to give us a little taste of what's to come in later installments. She uses her power to take control of the train's mechanisms and holds it eventually before anyone else gets hurt. It's a nicely done sequence that doesn't go overboard with the visual effects and still delivers. Hmm, I wonder if Captain America got any weird ideas after seeing how skilled Wanda was with such a long object. Why was she up there all this time? Yep, it's about time I put some respect on Yondu's name. After getting his mohawk blown off and being imprisoned by a highly meta taser face, he bonds with Rocket Raccoon and they start working on his new hairstyle before being freed by Baby Groot and Caglin. Now that he's equipped with a new scalp and reunited with his trusty arrow, the swanky anti-hero sets loose upon the entire fleet and whistles his way through their deaths. It's a neatly choreographed scene with the arrow slicing through everyone's bodies as if Yondu's trying to win a prize at his local carnival. Yeah, Baby Groot and Rocket Raccoon also also joining on the fun, but let's face it, they'd all be dead me if it wasn't for Yondu's space samurai act. It kind of makes you think how lethal the guy is despite never being shown in that light. Man, I wish I had that kind of power. The only thing I get when I whistle is a slap. No Will, that's not an invitation. You look like Mary Poppins. Is he cool? Hell yeah, he's cool. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all! Yeah, I know, the Phoenix ain't exactly a hero, but Jean Grey surely is, and she does keep popping up occasionally in this sequence. Professor X and Magneto try to talk to her at home, although Eric's just kind of waiting for her to go batshit crazy. He doesn't have to wait long, as Charles tries to read her mind without consent, and that triggers her faster than a Gen Z snowflake. The Phoenix takes over, and she starts wreaking all kinds of havoc. That includes fighting back Charles's power and disintegrating him in just a matter of seconds. I mean, this was so intense that the audience forgot there's a battle between Wolverine and the freaking Juggernaut going on downstairs. All in all, it just feels crazy to see the leader of the X-Men being blasted away so casually and it really sets the tone for what the Phoenix is capable of. When we talk about power demonstrations, it's hard not to include the Man of Steel who lives up to that name quite literally in this scene. It's a typical evening in Metropolis as a bunch of goons try to pull off the typical bad guy act by firing their weapons at innocent civilians. A couple of cops are about to face the opposite of police brutality, but then Superman drops by and takes the bullets like a pro. He doesn't even say anything and casually walks up to the goon as he runs out of firepower. The dude clearly doesn't get the message and tries shooting him in the eye, but that only adds on the flex as Kal-El just stands there and takes it without blinking. <laughs> Get it? As you'd expect, the bullet gets squished and the rest is pretty much implied. Now that's how you dominate a scene without even having a single line of dialogue. Ooh. 
With all the hate Brie Larson was getting leading up to this film, it's understandable she didn't really have much to do in Endgame, but yeah, when she did make an entrance, she had everyone shitting bricks. So the iconic reunion scene has happened and Wanda is tearing Thanos a new one, but then he plays Spoil Spore and has his ships attack everyone including his own soldiers. Not sure if that's part of his whole cleansing plan, but it's not like the purple titan was a role model anyway, right? However, the ship suddenly starts firing at an unknown object and there she is, flying at supersonic speed to save the day. Captain Marvel enters the scene and destroys the ship faster than Seth Rogen destroys his munchies. The fact that the battleship had to redirect all its cannons towards her and still couldn't even lay a scratch speaks volumes of the kind of badass Captain Marvel really is. Hey everyone. Hey Peter Parker. You got something for me? I had to beat an old lady with a stick to get this. Thanks, Hot Max. A power demonstration list without the Sorcerer Supreme would have been like Gordon Ramsay without his potty mouth. It just doesn't feel authentic, does it? Thanos is pretty much dominating the battle after Star-Lord executes the biggest fuck-up in Marvel history. That is, of course, till Stephen Strange turns up with that wizard swag. He gives the Mad Titan a run for his money, and that leads Thanos to create a freaking black hole using the Infinity Stones. But as he throws the hole at him, Strange just casually turns it into a bunch of super pretty butterflies. Just look at Thanos' face. Even he was like, huh, is this a joke to you. The fact that Steven managed to counter such a massive chunk of energy without even flinching goes on to show that he really is in the same league as Wanda or even Captain Marvel. I mean, you don't have to be Sherlock Holmes to figure that out now, do you? You're full of tricks, wizard. <laughs> you never once used your greatest weapon. A fake. <laughs> as Superman might be, his weakness against Kryptonite is kind of like Quentin Tarantino's weakness against feet. Okay, maybe that was a bit of an extreme comparison, but yeah, you get my point, right? Anyway, Lex Luthor exploits his Kryptonian difficulties and beats him down, so it's up to Lois and a fake baby daddy to save her real baby daddy. Clark's had enough of this nonsense, so he decides the only way to battle Kryptonite is to lift the whole island and throw it into space. It's a weird flex, but... Alright, we get it. We've seen the son of Krypton pull off some crazy stunts, but carrying a freaking island into space is just on another level. Also, don't forget that there are a few Kryptonite bars popping out from underneath as well, so it's not like the dude was at full power. And here I am complaining about my 20 kilo squat bar. This one's kind of a virtue signaling power flex. Thanos is beating the shit out of the three OG Avengers, and even though I'm not sure how that works given how Stormbreaker alone would have been enough to kill him in the previous movie, anyway, Iron Man's knocked out and Fat Thor's getting beaten to a pulp, so it's time for Captain America to come to the party. He wheels the mighty Mjolnir and proceeds to beat the hell out of the Mad Titan with a sense of justice. The dude's even able to summon electricity. I mean, I don't even know how that's possible either, but hey, look, who cares? Yeah, I might have king shamed Steve earlier in this list, but if anything, it just goes to show that he can be worthy even if you are a freak in between the sheets. Either way, it was total fan service and it was way too epic to ignore. Just ask the crowds back in 2019. No, 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 give me that. You have the little one. <laughs> This has got to be the most epic entrance across the entire MCU. After successfully crafting Stormbreaker with a little help from Groot, Thor takes his Guardian buddies along with him for a little trip to Wakanda where things aren't looking too good for the makeshift Avengers. It's even worse for poor Bruce Banner who isn't too good with the Hulkbuster, but it's not like he can access the angry green giant either. Luckily, he doesn't have to worry for long as Stormbreaker comes swooping in all those weird Chitari hybrids and saves our struggling heroes. Then of course, we all know what's coming. Thor wields his new weapon with total sass as he demands for Thanos, me, Thanos and pulls off the iconic jump and drop. Man, I get goosebumps just thinking about it, as I'm sure must have been the case for millions of fans across the globe. I could go on and on about the electric display of power, but it's an experience you just can't put into words. Your haircut? Notice you've copied my beard? 
And there you have it, folks. I've officially completed a trilogy of my top 10 superhero power demonstrations in movie. Now, do you want more? Let me know in the comments below. Check out the links in the description for access to my Patreon, my Discord server, and all my other socials as well. Like, share, and subscribe to show some love, and I'll see you next time on the TV region. Everybody in the park, park, park.